Hello, Ken Spriggs here with uh, the finale of my uh, classic er, remake of The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, McCready versus the Spider Head. Uh, wrapping up this video this week, quite a lot of work. Uh, several challenges came up. I tried some new techniques, and I think they turned out really nicely, especially the fire effect. Uh, so thanks again to um, uh, Tabletop Witchcraft. Uh, check out that site. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, he does some fantastic dioramas. And I followed his suggestion as far as uh, how to, to create it. And other people have done the same with cotton. But uh, I really liked his suggestion with the inks, the Bombay inks. So I picked those up. And I think those really helped to make it successful. So, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So I'm starting to work on uh, the remaining accessories to um, to add some character and some some things to the uh, to the room for the diorama. Uh, I had shown before this um, fire extinguisher that I got from Hobby Lobby. So I went online and I um, I just picked some stock images and downloaded them. One of a medical poster that uh, you see on the wall in one of the scene in the scene with the Norris head, spider head. Also a couple of um, just generic fire extinguisher labels, how to use it emergency fire extinguisher and then some an image of uh, an x-ray a chest x-ray to do a little x-ray machine that I want to do so I'm gonna have the fire extinguisher over by the doors I'm gonna have the poster on the back wall I'm gonna make a little um, box for the x-ray machine that I'm gonna have on the wall and then I'm gonna try to do like maybe a a surgery light that's about the only thing I'm gonna do so okay so I, I put these into word and scaled them down and then I printed them out on this vinyl I was gonna do something with decals or even see if I could do like a clear acetate for the x-ray but uh, hard to find but also really not worth it this vinyl works just fine for all the things I want to do here because it's it's sturdier than just paper self-adhesive and so it'll do what I need to do so all right <laughs> All right, so I put the labels on the fire extinguisher so it looks pretty cool. Just kind of gives it uh, some uh, detail to it. I still have to paint this top handle a silver or chrome silver. I need to paint the hose and the nozzle, probably like a, a, a black or maybe the rubber black, something like that. Uh, now this is gonna go right in this general area. I'm gonna have it hanged on, hanging on the wall, attach it on somehow. And that'll be cool. It'll just give it some color and some detail, add more realism to the to the display. Uh, now the poster, you can see I started wrinkling it up a bit, so it's, it's going to look kind of worn. I want to kind of put some washes on it too to make it look dirty, maybe fray some edges. It's going to go generally in this area, but I want to make it look like it's it's attached somehow, maybe hanging from a rope, something like that. We'll see, but generally in that area. And I have two sizes of the X-ray image. I'll probably go with the bigger one. And um, and that's going to be on a, um, I'm going to construct a little box with like the, the translucent white background and like an aluminum frame around it. Looks like they have an x-ray machine there. And then it's going to have a little cord coming down and I'm going to make it look like it's plugged into an outlet on the wall that I'll just kind of fashion there. So, okay. So uh, let me go ahead and work on these some more and uh, finish up the detail on the, on the room walls.
All right, so I completed the fire extinguisher and the, um, the poster on the wall. Fire extinguisher turned out really good. I'm really happy with that. Once I got it painted, I uh, used some oils to make it look pretty dirty and greasy, including the vinyl labels that are on there. I took a little piece of styrene and fashioned a, a holder for it, as you can see, and painted that chrome silver. All right, so that looks really cool. I think that looks really realistic. And then the poster, I used oils to make that all dirty and yellowed and and kind of put a wash on it. Then I just, um, I drilled, well, I taped it down after I wrinkled it and gripped some of the edges. And then I used a pin vise to drill some four little holes in each corner. And I cut out some very thin little wire, brass wire, and uh, just five minute epoxy it in there and just dab some on the tips to make it look like it's held up with like some thumbtacks. So, okay. So that's looking pretty cool. So, uh, let me go ahead and work on the um, on the X-ray box, and then uh, and get that attached as well. And here is the finished uh, x-ray box. I think that turned out really well. So the, the white there in the background, that's um, some acrylic, some uh, white acrylic that I had. And I just cut a square of it out. You can see it's kind of shiny there. Uh, it kind of looks like the illuminated panel that that would be on. Uh, the box itself is just Cyrene uh, sheet that I cut out. I use some L, uh, L uh, shapes to uh, to frame it on on the top edge here I just five minute epoxied it in the back and then I glued just a piece of thick wire that I have to be the the plug for it cut out a little piece of uh, styrene and drilled out some holes in it and just put in some red and some green it doesn't look red and green it's supposed to be the buttons to activate it so okay so that's ready to go um, I um, I also cut out a little piece of styrene to be the uh, wall outlet and uh, drilled out the top piece and drilled it through the wood so that this cord goes down through it. So what I want to do is probably the easiest way is just to uh, glue this down, glue that down through the hole, put a little bit of epoxy around the, the part where it meets, let it dry. Once it dries, I'll just paint it black, look like it's the plug going in there. So, okay, let me get that in there and then uh, finish up these parts, the extra accessories here on the, on the back walls. All right, and there's the detailing on the back wall. Cool looking fire extinguisher. The poster of the human body all worn and beat up. An x-ray uh, viewing machine plugged into the wall. So looking very cool. Only other thing I might try to do, we'll see, is possibly make, like I said, the surgical light that's hanging out over it. But I don't know if I want to do that. It'll be a little more, little more congested here with uh, McCready right here in the bed and the flame effect and all that. So, but for now, that's looking pretty sweet. So I'll kind of leave it there for now and then see if I want to do anything more with it. All right, so I'm doing some initial testing on these products here. I have um, Tamiya Clear Yellow, and I have uh, these new ones that I got, which are inks, Bombay inks, golden yellow. Uh, and as I said, I, I'm doing this because I saw a tutorial and this is what he had used and, and he seemed to have some good results. So what I did was I took two pieces of cotton and the one on the left here is the, the Tamiya Clear Yellow. And I just spray it on pretty good to get a to get this yellow color to get it to coat. Now it's not glossy as I thought it might be. 
I mean, it does flatten down the cotton a bit, and it does make some darker images where it's on a little heavier. Now, the one here on the right is the Bombay inks, and I didn't have to put on nearly as much because it's a very, very strong pigmented color, and that's kind of what I like about the inks, is that it's a very strong color. So that's a nice yellow. It's on there fairly even as well. There's a few variations, but nothing, nothing terribly unusual, but... I can get away with a lot less, and I really like that that color of yellow better on the cotton than the clear the clear yellow. Now both of them do tend to flatten down the cotton a little bit, and you want to kind of keep that wispy cotton look. Eh, not too bad, I guess. There's the bottom that isn't painted. All right, so. I do like this, so this is probably what I'm going to end up going with as far as uh, painting the, the flamethrower effect. So, okay. All right, so I went ahead and put some paint on this to test it out. Now, I noticed a problem which I was afraid was going to happen, and I have to go back and fix it. Uh, because I'm using hot glue on this, when I do this at 12 volts, it's not super hot, but it is warm. There is some warmth to it. So once this is on for a period of time, these LEDs down here tend to soften up the hot glue that's holding this post in place, <clears throat> and it starts to droop. You can see how far down it's gone. All right, so a bit of a rewind. Um, this first attempt has failed. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but... Um, Basically, it was for a couple of reasons. Uh, as I stated in the previous video, the hot glue was not the way to go. It was softening up the connections when the LEDs on the strip started to warm up. It was starting to droop, and then it wasn't very structurally sound. So I tore this off. I went back. I used five-minute epoxy. I mixed in some clear yellow, as you can see there, and I made it more solid, and then I put some five minute epoxy over the whole thing, put some cotton over it, got it all, got it painted and lit up. It looked really good, um, but it was still a bit of an issue. And then I went to test it just to make sure it was still working before getting it onto the base and it just wouldn't light up. Uh, so I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. I had to tear this off, uh, tear out the, the wiring, which was tough because of all the five minute epoxy. And then got down to the two connectors, and when I connect up some wires to it, the lights work. So um, I'm not sure what happened, why it failed, but I'm not real happy with the structure. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and redesign the whole thing. I can't really take these strip lights off because it's all really glued on there with the five-minute epoxy. So I'm going to redo it, do it well, do it correctly, and not do the same problems. No hot glue. Um, I'm not going to use the five minute epoxy over the entire thing like I did. And I want to add a few more lights if I can and just make it a better design uh, improved upon the first one. So let's go ahead and take a look and, um, and get this redone. All right, so I started gluing on some of the strip LEDs onto my structure here. So the structure is pretty straightforward. It's just a, um, a brass tube that I bent. It comes up, goes up, one big piece, so it's nice and sturdy. I uh, drilled a hole in the end of it, two holes actually. The one there that I stuck the thinner rod into, and then... Um, Five minute epoxy the whole thing well super glued a little bit then i five minute epoxied it and did the same with this so that that's the right angle with the rest of it so i have something to wrap the um the wire around and what i've done is i have one piece at the bottom i have one piece angled towards us because this is the way it'll be sitting and i'm going to do one more piece at the end make it kind of a triangular shape as you can see there so I have uh, full lighting around the, 
this part here. So now what I'm going to start doing now that I have a nice solid structure that isn't going to be affected by the warmth of the LEDs, I'm going to start wrapping this around this in different ways and, and coming up with the, the final lighting part of this here. So, all right. All right, so I wrapped the rest of the uh, strip lighting around the front. Try to get a lot of it over there. Put a little bit of five minute epoxy in a few spots just to hold it in place. The last part that came around the back here, as you can see, went along and finished the triangular part, the three. Sorry, that's not focused. Come on. Finished the, um, the three parts there. All right. Now, the way this is working, the bottom piece is separate. Well, it was separate. That's why I have the wires that are going to go down through the tube. And then I took another piece of wire and I wired together the two positives. And it just worked out that the two negatives were right next to each other. So I just spanned a piece of wire. I drilled some hole through each of them and wired some through and soldered it on. So I'm going to use some five minute epoxy glue this down just to keep it where it's supposed to be and um and now it all works all of it is connected so it all works through these wires right here which i'm going to shorten a little bit more and put them down through the hole in the brass tube and take it down through to light through the base so all right this one is a lot sturdier it now has a solid brass tube all the way through and so um it's, it's going to work a lot better than the original one, and I'm not going to have any problems with it drooping or melting or anything like that. So I'm going to go through now, and I'm going to put on some, uh, some of the yellow ink <clears throat> onto all of the LEDs, and then I'm going to start gluing down some cotton. I'm not going to use 5-Minute Epoxy because that's way too hard to get back off. I'm probably going to use something like some PVA glue or um, some of the Eileen's felt and foam glue, that kind of thing. So, all right. All right, so I have it all wired up. There's my light test, looking pretty good. I had got some uh, some of the uh, yellow inks onto the LEDs. You can't really tell as much in the video, but uh, if I put it close down there, you can see how yellow the light is down there on the cutting board. So, okay. So I didn't really show it, but um, the connector there. It's it's a much larger connector that's supposed to just clip on the end of a LED strip. So I cannibalized most of it, just enough for those two little metal leads to make contact. And then I, um, I took out the thicker wires and I put in these thinner wires, which I then ran down through the tube. And they're just coming out to a nine volt battery. I'm still gonna be doing the, probably the 12 volt, but um, I'm just testing it, so. Okay, all right, so the whole thing's wired up and ready to go. I'm gonna leave the um, this connector accessible, even though I'm gonna put some cotton over it. Um, this particular version, I'm just gonna put on some cotton using some uh, like PVA glue or something like that, so it's removable. I don't wanna be stuck the way I was on the first one where it's really hardened with five minute epoxy and can't be removed, so, okay. So I need to get this in position. Um, well, get it get it rigged up and then start um, putting some cotton on. I have to have it lit up while I'm putting the cotton on so I can see where the hot spots are. So, okay. <laughs> All right, so I got all of the cotton glued down and I've let it dry for a few hours. Uh, I used um, Aileen's foam and felt glue. It's sort of like a PVA glue. It's thicker though, it's a tacky glue. And I didn't put any on the actual lights. I just stuck it in between the lights and on the edges. And then I just put down some layers of cotton. Uh, and the beauty of the cotton is that it looks like wisps of, of smoke or fire because it's of its layering and it makes it look more realistic. So. So what I did was I went ahead and attached it up to the um, remote control sensor so I can turn it on. Another thing I can do, I'll show you here, is put it on, is this really cool sensor from Evan Designs has a dim and a bright feature. So I can dim it. 
I have it on 12 volts. So if I take it all the way up to 12 volts, that's the brightest it goes. If I drop it down, it goes down to 11. Then it goes down to nine. I tested it. I have a voltmeter that I tested it so I can see what kind of voltage I was going to get by, by doing it. So what I can do now, it looks a lot brighter on the camera. This is about nine volts. It looks brighter. I don't want to run this at 12 because it really is just too warm. And I'm just afraid of some failure in the LEDs if I keep it at that. So I'm going to try to do it at, at 9 or 11. Uh, it doesn't go to 10 from what I could tell. Um, but I still have to put some some uh, of the dyes onto it. I want to try to keep them as, as uh, light as possible to keep most of the yellow. And you can see how the yellow is really sticking through. Now what I did was... <clears throat> The, um, the dabbing on with a paintbrush didn't get it as yellow as I wanted it, so I went over and basically airbrushed over all of the LEDs. And it coated it a lot nicer, and it gave it a lot more yellow look. So you can definitely see how, how much more of a yellow, intense look this is. And this is without any paint at all. This is just a plain cotton. So what that does is helps me. I don't have to put as much yellow on. I can just do a little bit of yellow and then focus mostly on the orange and the red to add some fire highlights. And that way I don't really saturate the cotton as much and it, it keeps it looking more like a fire plume. So, okay. So um, I have to have this lit up to paint it so I can see where I'm painting it on and how heavy I want it to be. But let me go ahead and do that and then we'll, um, we'll go ahead and get this fire effect all taken care of. Right, and there's the final fire effect where I airbrushed on some of the clear, well, not clear, the um, yellow, orange, and red inks. Not so much the yellow since it's already yellow coming through the cotton from the, the um, inks I sprayed over the LEDs, but um, definitely um, more orange and red. Just from the top. Kind of a straight on view. Okay. All right. So that's looking really good. And right now that's it. Um, that's at nine volts. So I can make it brighter and do it at 11. And there's 12. <clears throat> Probably not going to run it at 12 volts. I think it's a little too warm. But uh, even at nine, it looks really good but I can do 10. And once again, I'm changing it with the remote control from Evan Design, so, okay. Looking really sweet. So that's all ready to go. I also trimmed down the, um, the wiring for the, let me turn it off. <clears throat> and you can see too when it's off, definitely more of the oranges and reds on the cotton, not so much the yellow, which comes through from the uh, yellow underneath. All right, so, what I'm going to have is this coming out of the back wall, just the connector. It's going to be glued in place. Here's the uh, circuit board for the remote control. And then this is going to go right next to it. There's a hole for that as well coming out of the back wall. And then just two of these wires, these two wires are going to come up and connect underneath with the fire effect once I glue it into place. So what I'm thinking I can do is glue the back wall on, glue the... Um, Glue these into it, the remote, because we'll just be in back. It's real easy, it has a good range, so I can just uh, turn it on in the back of it. That way I don't have to disguise it or anything. And then uh, run the wires up. I can connect the wires into, um, into the fire effect and put that on next. And then I can go ahead and start connecting the other parts, like the, um, the body on the table and the spider, and put some goo down, that sort of thing. So, okay, but definitely coming together, getting ready to get this all wrapped up. All right, so I'm working on finishing up the edge around the front where the wall, where there is no wall, since I left that as a bare foam. So I'm using this, um, looks like corrugated uh, metal, but it's, it's a um, styrene sheet that I'm cutting into strips the right length. I'm using this um, thin balsa wood, and I'm just grooving out 
these little areas where it's kind of notched look like it's a wood plank and just using some hot glue to glue the whole thing in around it so and again i'm not looking to get a really perfect finish because i'm going to chew it up and make it look weathered and, and nasty just like this use the um the salt and hairspray effect i just want it to look like something finished rather than just the foam all right so this i am using hot glue for because this will be permanent i used hot glue to glue the floor down as well and it's on there nice and sturdy so i do use hot glue just not for things involving wiring <laughs> or fire effects which is going to be nasty so all right so i'll continue to work around that i'm um i'm redefining this front edge a bit for the um for the nameplate to go under so it fits nicely and I'll have to cut some of this just to fit right around that and um, and look natural so I can slide in the, the nameplate and pull it back out again. So, okay. <laughs> All right, so I finished the, um, the trim work around the edge of it, just up to where it meets the walls in the back got both sides of it and again like I said I made it rough I wasn't worried about making it look perfect or, or anything else it's just supposed to cover up that styrofoam seam now when I got to the front I had to trace it and trim it out and then do a little bit of sanding so it's still not quite perfect but what I'm thinking of doing is taking some of the snow effects build it up on the base some more right in where you would see those gaps and they're not too bad and then um let that harden onto the base, or I keep calling it a base, the nameplate, this nameplate right here. So uh, this is still gonna be separate and I, I um, cut out a lot more underneath so it slides under just fine. And the battery and the switch will be attached permanently onto this nameplate and I'll be able to just pull it in and out. So there we go. So that's all done. I need to go ahead and tape off the top edge where I'm going to be doing some painting, get some primer on this. And I'll probably just do the same thing I did on the first one. Start with the gray primer and then uh, do some of the German gray over top and do the, the salt and hairspray effect on it. So, okay. All right. But looking pretty cool. All So I used the uh, salt and hairspray technique, and I used the neutral gray. It turned out pretty cool. Again, a very easy process. I really like this uh, salt and hairspray technique. It yields great results, realistic looking weathering, and you don't have to put a lot of time and effort into it. But that goes really nicely with the rest of it. So it looks like a finished edge. And then um, again, this will just go in like that. And there's how that's going to look. So, okay, really happy with that. So, so that's all ready to go. I just have to finish up the wiring underneath for the um, for the post for the fire effect, and I'll be ready to start putting this all together. All right, so I got the battery glued on to the, um, the back of this with some hot glue. All I did was cut a little slice in that and work the wire through it since it was already all wired and five minute epoxied it in place. And I just wrapped those up with a piece of wire so they're just like suspended there, but they're not going anywhere, those extra wires. And um, then I glued down the switch and the battery onto the back with some hot glue. So that's nice and solid. And I just turn it on. And the whole thing just slides right under the base, right in the center of it. So it's ready to go. And it's a, it's a independent, so I can just take it out. And I can remove these batteries, even though it's glued on, they can just come out easily. So, all right.
All right, so coming down to the wire here. So I'm going ahead and gluing on the different parts. Always a little nervous at this point, wanting to test the lights over and over just to make sure everything's working, obviously. But I um, I got the two back, two ha two parts of the back wall glued on. These pieces here. I didn't glue this one on yet because once I put in the um, the the bed with the the body and the spider, I'm going to be working in this area to put on some of that wave effects to look like it's goo and I want to be able to get into to here and not have that wall in the way and that part can just go right on uh, pretty much the last part is what I'm going to be doing so um, I also got the wiring done as you can see it's coming up out of here I still have to trim this off and I'll wire it into the fire effect and then glue that down in through the with the post uh, but I got the um, I got the adapter glued in and wiring coming up through here let me go ahead and show you the back of that all right so here's the back of the wall so there's the adapter to plug in and that little hole right next to it that's the sensor for the remote control so both of those are glued in with five minute epoxy they're nice and solid so they're not going anywhere and neither is that and like i said that has a um that is a very good range so i can literally just plug it in point the re remote in this direction and it's going to turn it on for me and control that and then all i have are the two wires coming out through um through the top for the fire effect so all right so now i need to go ahead and glue in the fire effect with McCready because they have to be glued together to make sure that they're both lined up. So let me go ahead and work on that. It's a really big step here. So I'm definitely nervous, but um, I'm excited to see this all come together. So I have all of the figures glued down. The uh, figure on the bed and glued to the floor. I have the spider glued down. And I wasn't worried about getting too much of the glue visible. I even made some trailed out on purpose. Because he's going to be gooped up and made to look slimy. And so is the rest of this. So what I'm going to do now, the last thing I need to do before putting on this last wall, is to put on these wave effects, water effects, water waves. From Woodland Scenics and it's just a really thick gel but it dries clear and it doesn't crack and it it makes everything look kind of goopy it's a little thicker and um, more ooze looking than just like a clear like a, a gloss clear would be so I'm gonna put it on the spider and make him look kind of gooey in certain places <laughs> and also this body here so okay so let me get that all done We'll get the last wall on and then I will do the final review. So there is the spider all slimed up. Looking really gross and disgusting. You can see the little trails from his feet. I kind of angled them off in that direction towards the, um, towards the body, which I also put a lot of ooze and slime on the, on the ground, on the floor. see how <laughs> some of it's even dripping at the ends now this is dry I let it sit overnight and it's all set up but you can see a, more of a shine on those parts looks a little more realistic so Mr. Nora's spider head. All right, so everything's all finished up. Let me go ahead and put the nameplate 
on the front and we'll get him lit up and I will show the finale of this creepy build. <laughs> All right, and here is the nameplate that I pre-wired with the battery. So I just get and turn it on. And it just slides straight into here, fits nicely. Okay, and then I have my remote control. So I just have to turn that on in the back. Just fix the okay. It's fixing the brightness there. Okay, so right now I'm running it at about 11, 11 volts. Looking pretty sweet. Fantastic. All right, so let me go ahead and get a, a little bit of a panning around. So there's the pulsating thing logo on the ice block. Just a little bit of glow around the edges, which looks kind of cool, but it definitely looks pretty sweet. And there's the fire effect coming out of McCready's flamethrower. The ripped open Norris body on the table with the ooze coming down. The creepy oozy spider. I like how the glow glows, lights up his face. That's pretty cool from the flame. Yeah, he's about to get it. <laughs> my backdrop with my fire extinguisher poster the x-ray machine i decided against doing the surgical light because it was just too much going on over in this corner if i did i think this is a perfect balance of it so straight up shot all right fantastic I'm very happy with that. Definitely happy with how that's all turned out. Quite a bit of work and certainly my first attempt at a fire effect. So, uh, but I'm real pleased with that. All right, so I will go ahead and um, let me show you that up on my shelf with my other models. I had to make some room for it. And then uh, and we'll see some stills of this as well. All right, and there it is up on my shelf. I did have to do some rearranging and I had to put a little, add a little section on my shelf here. And I have my Mando and Quill riding their blurgs. And I moved my Predator ship down to one of these little cabinets that I have underneath. Still have some more. Uh, little Grogu has to share a uh, room with his baby version in a crib. <laughs> It's kind of unusual that um, this is so large it actually makes my Ahsoka Tano look small, which isn't small at all. This is a very large diorama. <laughs> but by comparison, it certainly looks much, much larger. And also with the original thing and its counterpart. All right, fantastic. So very happy with how that turned out. So I'm all ready to go to Wonderfest. And uh, quite a few models. I have 10 models to enter. If 
I do manage to get anything else done between now and then, then we'll see if I have anything else to enter as well. So, all right. All right. So, uh, that's going to be a wrap on this build. Very happy with uh, how that's all turned out. So thanks again to Mark Fraley for his uh, fantastic nameplate with the ice block. I think that really added a fantastic element to this build. Uh, thanks also to um, a YouTube channel called Tabletop Witchcraft, and I linked it in the video. Uh, followed his tutorial and um, and how to make the, uh, the fire effect. Some really good advice there, especially using the... Um, uh, the the inks instead of using some paints on the cotton and um, and getting that effect to look realistic so all right so uh, very happy with how this has all turned out thank you to all my new subscribers uh, stay tuned I will be returning to my discovery build and uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get that completed in time for Wonderfest but I'm I'm going to give it my best shot uh, as far as getting that done as well but uh, stay tuned.